I've got the S-Works Zeus all ready for electronics and paint. Let's take a look before we start getting some good stuff into this thing and see how the build went. It's Rich here from the rcnetwork.com and today we have the build update of the S-Works Zeus. Now, of course, this is their newest 1.8 scale four-wheel drive pro monster truck kit. Now, in this video, we're gonna be going over how the build went up to this point. Pretty much what you see in front of you is what comes in the kit and we'll be going over the owner's manual, how I like the kit so far, things that came up during the build, and the overall product quality, product fitment, and everything for this build. For some of you, you may be new here at the RC Network, so let me give you some of my credentials as far as building kits. To date, I have built 47 kits here at the RC Network. The S-Work Zeus in front of you is my 48th kit I've built. So I got a few builds under my belt now, and let's get on with this build update. As with any kit build, you do have to put it together. You do have to supply all of your own electronics. And in this case, you do have to paint your body and also supply wheels and tires to get this thing up and running. Some of the tools needed to build your S-Works Zeus are some standard tools, including a 2.5, 2.0, and 1.5 millimeter hex wrench, a 7.0 and 5.5 nut driver, a good pair of needle nose pliers, a good sharp X-Acto knife, and a turnbuckle wrench. I ended up needing the 5.5 millimeter version. Some supplemental tools that make the build go even easier are a good set of shock shaft pliers, a dedicated 17 millimeter hex wrench for your wheels, a good four millimeter arm reamer, just found a little bit of material in the arms that needed to be reamed out, a good sharp body hole reamer, and of course a five millimeter Allen with a slight modification for the pivot ball suspension. More on that later. The S-Work Zeus does come with some of the fluids to get your vehicle going, including two bottles of 400 CPS shock fluid. You do get 3000 CPS differential for the rear, and you do get 7000 for the front and center differentials. You do get a little vial of grease right here, but I do prefer having grease in a tube to kind of squeeze out onto the items. Supplemental items to make your build go even better and last longer is some good thread lock. I picked up some team associated version. I do like to use Protec RC's Premier Blue O-ring grease, building my shocks for the O-rings, and finally chapstick to build my turnbuckles. Just gives a good coating on them, lasts a long time, makes turnbuckles turning really easy. After building the S-Work Zeus, this is what I have left over. Now I haven't mounted my motor yet, but it does come with a 16 tooth pinion and all of the hardware to actually mount the motor to the motor mount. Now you do get two extra spur gears that are somewhat modular. They can be re removed off of the center diff without disassembling the center diff, which is pretty nice. You do get an extra bag of hardware and you get all of this array of different plastic tree parts. Now, I don't really wanna go through all of them, but there's lots of parts in here that don't really go to this vehicle. And you do get like 26 different servo horns over here on the far side. Also different blocks right here that are all made out of plastic, a lone block over here, and lots of adjustable pills throughout these parts trees. So before we get into the nitty gritty of this kit, let's first address the first thing that comes to my mind, and that is what the hell is this thing? Now, of course, this is marketed as a pro monster truck kit, but clearly you see here, this is a truggy. It's kind of like a short wheelbase truggy. Has the wheelbase of a buggy, but the body, the arms, and of course the wing there of a truggy. So is this really a monster truck? When I think of monster truck, I think of Bigfoot, something that comes crashing down on cars and has big wheels and tires. Uh, this thing just looks like a race truggy just with a short wheelbase. So that is my first issue with it so far. Uh, I posted it up on social media last week and I had a lot of people commenting saying, is this S-Works' newest truggy? They had no idea 
idea that this was a monster truck. So let's get into the build update. Now the S-Works Zeus's owner manual is pretty well laid out. It has great one-to-one -one diagrams here on the side as far as hardware and certain pieces. It does have great explanations and has some good you know, do and don't do items throughout the manual. And I definitely appreciate that. Overall in the kit, I didn't have any missing pieces. I had a couple bobbles with some hardware, but in the end, this thing got all together and there was no issues with the manual. But in this section of the video, I'd like to just point out some highlights that I point out in this uh, manual, just to give you some notes when you're building your S-Works Zeus. Starting with the fitment of the actual differentials. Now I noticed that the front and rear differentials, when you locked these screws all the way down, they were a little bit tight and a little bit of grit on the teeth. I ended up backing these screws off just a little bit. I'm talking not even an eighth of a turn, just to give the spider gears inside a little bit of movement and it made them very smooth. Throughout the manual, it does a good job of actually notating which parts tree the plastic item comes off of, but it would have been nice to have the actual part number because they're listed on the parts tree of which part this was. Now for this item, it was pretty easily identifiable on the parts tree, but some other items that look very similar, like the pills for the D, C, B, and A blocks, they're a little confusing. When mounting the upper hinge pin adjustment for the upper arms on the front, mounting it into the carbon fiber top brace, it was super tight. I had to take just a little bit of material off of the carbon fiber top plate just to get this thing to seat in without just cramming it on there. Once I screwed it down, everything was good to go. I did note in my owner's manual, it came with an addendum for pages 13 and 14. I went ahead and X'd out the ones that were in the manual. And honestly, I don't know what the differences are, but on page 14, I did note that there was some items that needed to be trimmed that just didn't seem like they should be trimmed. And I haven't trimmed them yet, but based on mounting wheels, I'll probably have to trim them. Tightening down the servo saver, and asks for eight millimeters of space. Tightening that down with your fingers will completely wreck your hands. I ended up having to use vice grips to actually tighten that down, and it took a little bit of the finish off of that knurled adjuster. Throughout the build, I found that opening up a bag, like in this case, bag E3, it allowed for all the parts to be used, but I did not find the in the E3 bag, I actually found them in the E2 bag. So had to kind of search for these things to get everything done. The front body mounts here in step 23, ask for them to be mounted. It gives you all the part numbers and the screws and everything, but I already installed them back on step 12 of the owner's manual. A little bit of a hiccup there. When I got to step 28, it calls for two of these cap head screws, three by 20 millimeter. I ended up getting three by 24 millimeter cap head screws. So a little bit odd, had them in my screw pack and just went ahead and installed the correct screw right here for the wing mount going on to the rear shock tower. When mounting the side guards here onto the aluminum chassis, you do get counter sunk screws, but the surface of the side guards, you would think you would get a button head screw. Well, it actually tells you to go ahead and sink the screw in, kind of altering the plastic as you do it. So a little bit odd, but it ended up working out. The last couple of pages has some pretty cool little items that they included on this that I can't really show you on the actual vehicle. The first thing here is it does include four O-rings here. They get mounted underneath the actual ESC plate. So it just gives a little bit of vibration dampening to protect your ESC, which was a nice touch. Also the bladders for the shocks, probably the best bladders I've ever seen in a shock thus far. 48 builds, these are probably the best ones. Has like a honeycomb design and they just seemed very firm and just a great material that they're made out of. And then finally, as far as the shocks, it would have been nice if they had actually written instructions on how to bleed them. Uh, I've seen other manufacturers do it and it definitely helps when you're building it, especially if you're a new timer. Looking at 
the body that comes with the S-Works Zeus. It comes with a Truggy style body. Now it's not pre-cut, so you do have to cut it out. And I noticed that there wasn't any mention of this in the instruction manual, but there are two cut lines here on this actual body. I've already cut out the wheel wells and all the way down the side, but there's actually two markings here on the rear of it. One for the Zeus and then one for their standard Truggy. You can kind of see the line right here on the far side, kind of hard to see on camera, but go ahead and follow the interior line when cutting out for your Zeus. It gives it for that shorter wheelbase and cuts off about two inches of the body to make it fit the Zeus. Now with the body off, you can really see all of the quality that goes into the S-Works Zeus. This thing has some pretty cool items and throughout the next section of this video, we're gonna be going through some of the actual parts and showing you what I like and dislike about this build. First off, the Zeus rides on pivot ball suspension or some people call pillow ball suspension. It's basically a different way the steering quote unquote knuckles operate and it uses these large adjusters that go in onto a large ball, thus giving it the pivot ball suspension name. Now with that, I did have to kind of make my own five millimeter driver right here. Just use some electrical tape to prevent the driver from going all the way into the pivot ball. And just as you adjust these things in, they're a real pain to get perfectly straight and get seated in there because you're seating an aluminum item into plastic. So it takes a little getting used to how it should feel and definitely don't cross thread that thing in. Just take your time and get that thing perfect. Now the shocks were quite nice to build and they should function pretty well. Now what I really liked about these shocks was that they're very high quality. I definitely appreciate that because I like having nice Nice shocks they definitely give you a better ride and better damp into feel now with these they do come with an aluminum cap aluminum threaded bodies and they do appear to be hard anodized they do have aluminum knurled adjusters and an aluminum bottom cap on them so pretty much a stout shock overall and the dampening feels quite nice the differentials are definitely nice and they are stout they seem to be made from machined steel so they're definitely made from the right material and then of course cut to the perfect exact dimensions. Now, originally when I unboxed the S-Work Zeus, it appeared to have all plastic A, B, C, and D block, the suspension holders. When assembling, it did end up having aluminum hinge pin holders for the A, C, and D. So the B block, the one right behind the front arms, is still plastic. The center drive line for the S-Work Zeus just travels right down the center of the vehicle, thus giving it the name center drive line. It does have a large dog bone going from the front to the center and then a very tiny one in the rear very similar to the Techno vehicles. Now I've already installed my servo into this build. It does not come with it in the box, but it just saved me a few minutes. But with that, the actual steering is so smooth on this S-Works Zeus. I can't believe just there's no stiction or anything. It just, it went together perfectly and it is very, very smooth. The battery box that comes with the S-Works Zeus is not waterproof and it does appear to be kind of flimsy. It mounts to the side guard here. It's plastic on plastic. And if you flip it over here, it seems like they use the incorrect screws or the incorrect link screws. They kind of peeked out here and gave a little bit of a nipple here here on the side guard. The battery box on the S-Work Zeus is in two pieces right here. It would have been nice if it was maybe a little bit more substantial and had just a little bit higher of wall right here. Now it gives you maybe a quarter inch of wall on most of the sides of it and it does allow for using two 2S or one 4S pack. If you choose to run 6S in this thing, you can also do the split. You just have to find the right batteries for them to make it happen. Looking at the motor mount, it is a quality piece of machined aluminum. What I hate about the motor mount, it is does not have any type of motor mount. It is affixed to the vehicle and you have to bolt the actual motor to this fixed unit. So doing so, you have to have a super long hex wrench. And if you see here, bringing in my MIP, I don't reach it. So I'm gonna have to 
finagle something to get a driver into there. I absolutely hate these motor mounts. On the opposite side of that dreaded motor mount is an aluminum machined center diff upright, which is a nice upgrade. Usually you will not see that. You'll see a plastic piece, and this does give you an aluminum piece and a quality one at that. So nice upgrade here. Right next to all of the appropriate items, we do have the actual chassis braces. They are thin. I mean, I'm worried about these things. They're about an eighth of an inch of plastic. They have little cutouts on each side. Uh, they're pretty thin. So I'm hoping that the power and the weight of this vehicle will not snap those chassis braces. We'll have to see once we run it. The last notable item about the S-Work Seuss are the arms. These things are super stout. You have inserts that run all the way throughout the arm, giving it a monocoque design. If we look at the bottom of the arm as I flip it over here, they are pretty much solid and smooth. These things will glide over almost anything and they're gonna be super durable because they're pretty thick. So just to sum up some of my thoughts about the S-Works Zeus and just some highlights and lowlights about the kit, it's a pretty good quality. It seems like it'll be very durable out on the bashing area if you choose to run it that way. Uh, the overall quality and part fitment was just top notch. I didn't have any missing parts throughout the build. I did have a little bit of a bobble of some hardware, but in the end, this thing got, all got together and I made it happen. The downfall of building the s -Rex Zeus was there's lots of extra parts and it seemed like there was extra parts from maybe other kits. It just didn't make sense as you were building it from step to step because there was parts left over. It's always a bad feeling when you're building, especially late at night. The dreaded motor mount. I hate that motor mount. I can already tell I'm going to dread trying to find the right tool. And believe me, I got some tools here at the RC Network to actually mount a motor onto that motor mount. It's gonna have to be long and it's something that I'm gonna have to add to my pit bag. And with that, it's just gonna be tough to get the right pinion mesh and get everything all set up with that motor mount. The shocks, the shocks are just absolutely gorgeous. They did not skimp one ounce of money on those shocks. They're top quality, great fitment, top quality parts. I love those shocks. Lastly, what is this thing? Is it a monster truck as it claims on the box or is it a truggy or maybe a stubby truggy? Has a short wheelbase, has a truggy body, truggy wing. It's not really a monster truck. You can probably make it into a monster truck. It probably wouldn't be too hard to fabricate some sort of body mounts, delete the wing, and just really make this into a monster truck. Well, guys, that is my build update on the S-Works Zeus. This thing is pretty cool. I've got to say that the parts and the fitment and the overall look of this vehicle is pretty cool. Now, it is a little bit of a bummer that it doesn't have a monster truck actual body on it. It does have a wing, which is kind of a bummer as well, but I think I think in the end, with even with the truggy body and the wing, this thing will do pretty well anywhere you run it. Well guys, that is it for now. If you have any comments or questions about this video, please check out the video description. I'm gonna have links to all of the items I mentioned in this thing, along with the s works Zeus. If you are building an s works Zeus, please comment down below on what you think about it. Do you like it as a truggy or would you rather have a monster truck body included in it? Leave those comments down below. Well guys, that is it for now. Comments, questions down below, and as always, thumbs up and subscribe. That's it for now, guys. Over now.